Hey guys, welcome back to the layout. So today I've got another HO How To video for you. I'm going to show you how I made this. Um, as I mentioned in my pre previous videos, uh, these four lights are connected to my PM42, so I will not be showing how I did that, although it actually is used um, in the same principle. Um, but basically I'm going to show you how I did these switches here so that I can turn on the switch, it applies power to the rails, and there's a, a little LED light that turns on with the track, and that applies for all of them. Okay. So I'm gonna show you how I made it. Now, we're just gonna come over here and uh, massively zoom out. Okay, so, to start with, um, the panel itself is actually just made out of this cheap board I had laying around that I, this, this board here is actually what I used to test the, the switch fittings and my drill bit sizes. Um, I'm, I'm not even gonna begin to know what this is, honestly. Um, it's just wood I had laying around. I, I see a lot of people use that tempered hardwood. Um, I think really anything thin enough um, to allow the LEDs and the switches to pass through will be fine. Um, what I did, those are square switches, so I actually found a drill bit that was big enough. Now I didn't do it specifically on this, but uh, a drill bit big, just as big as the width of the, uh, or sorry, the, the width of the switch. Um, so you can see I drilled the hole and then I took a jigsaw and I cut the rectangle. Now again, I didn't do it completely, I was just testing, but um, so you know, you end up getting a nice rectangle that fits. And obviously with the LEDs, I just drilled holes and stuck them through and then I hot glued everything to the back. For the front, I just printed out a piece of paper and I actually white glued it to the front. Again, very cheap, very easy. I don't uh, claim it to be massively uh, great, but it works and it looks pretty good, so I'm happy with it. All right, so this is all it is. All of those switches, this is the ba like this is the circuit that I used. Um, that's it, you know. It obviously has more switches, more LEDs, but every single track, this is how I have it set up. And, you know, there may be better ways out there, but this is a really cheap way. I, I didn't buy anything. I had everything um, here, so I decided to utilize what I had. Um, and it works really well, and uh, it looks good. So we're going to go ahead and start up at the top. Okay, so this is your power bus. In my case, I'm running DCC with Digitrax. Um, any DCC system you're gonna have a power bus I guess any DC system you're gonna have a power bus too so um, up here is our power bus okay um, I use terminal strips for everything it's just what I do um, and it makes it nice and easy removable changeable all that stuff so um, you can see here basically I just have the black going to a second terminal and the red going to a second terminal Okay, so that's all it's doing here. So you have black coming in, black going out, and then black duplicating onto, so it's one to three and two to four. Okay, so that's all that is. So your red and black wire is track power, okay? Now, if we take a close look, I'm gonna move you slightly in. All right, so let's actually jump down here. This is the track, okay? So each one of those stall tracks has a gap in them, whether it be plastic insulators, uh, sorry, insulating rail joiners, or a physical gap. In my case, I have a physical gap. Um, just some way to isolate the track from the rest of your layout. So, you know, what I ended up doing is I had a, a physical gap here, and then my wire still, a, you know, I've got the, the two feeders coming in from each rail. So we're gonna say, you know, red is our out, outside rail, 
and black is inside, okay? And this just goes up to this nice terminal strip up here. All right. Okay, so um, we're not going to talk about the blue and gray wires just yet, okay? So what we're looking at from our, our bus line, okay, the inside rail comes and attaches directly to the terminal strip, which then goes down to the rail, the inside rail. Yes. So, oh, sorry, the outside rail. I goofed already. My bad, my bad. I'm not thinking straight. Okay, so you can see that basically from the bus, there is no interruption. It goes directly to the outside rail. All right. Um, the black, it comes down, and you can see it's interrupted by this switch. Now, this is what controls your power. If I just zoom in. Okay, so it's just, I'm going to flip this over. It's just a, a two terminal switch. There's only two poles and either it's on and those poles are making a connection to each other or it's off and it interrupts the connection. That's it. It's not like the double pull, double throw we saw when I did my tortoises or my um, programming track. It's a simple on off. Either it's off and these are not connected or it's on and these are connected. That's it. Okay. And I bought these off China eBay for three dollars for a pack of ten. Okay, uh, we're not pushing that much power through them, so I would not worry. So what that does is, so from the bus it comes into the switch, and in this case it's on, so the power continues to the track or to this terminal, which continues to the track, right, the inside rail. So right now this track has would have power. Well, when I turn that off right your outside rail always has power but your inside rail does not therefore you don't have a full circuit your train isn't going to turn on right you need power to both rails to have your whether it's dc or dcc in ho with a two rail system you need both rails having power so in this case it turn the locomotive is off you cannot move it, no sound, no lights, nothing, okay? So that's all that is. That's, that's all I did is I put a switch in the middle of one of the wires, okay? So you can see again, from the bus, the outside rail, which is red, goes to the terminal, directly to the outside rail. The inside terminal rail, or uh, inside terminal bus, is interrupted by the switch, either on or off. If it is off, the power stops there. If it is on, power continues to this terminal block, which then is to this inside rail. All right, and that's as simple as that, okay? Now, I prefer having status LEDs. Uh, you know, it's on if track power is on. It's off if track power is off, okay? Um, I have bicolor LEDs, but which is why they're orange, because they're green and red, and the voltage is not enough to make them directly one color so they become orange regardless of what side I uh, put them but you can use any um, I think they're 1.5 volt uh, LEDs and basically any of the LEDs you got get off um, eBay for if you're using them for tortoise they work for tortoise as well um, but ba you know your your basic I believe 1.5 LED uh, volt LED um, I could be wrong, but uh, I'll, I'll correct myself with a little annotation there if I am incorrect. Um, so basically that's where these blue and gray wires come in. Now it's very important how you have this set. Now I have it set up so that when I, when I have track power on, the light turns on. Okay, if you want it set up in such a way that the light is only on when the train is on the track, such as like a cheap block detection, you would obviously wire this different, but this is wired to only be on when the track power is on. And all I've done here, and I, I'm, I'm basically just using the track power to power the LED. Um, you can see it feeds into the same terminal block after the switch. And just like the trains, the LED needs both 
sides to have power to make a complete circuit, so one positive, one negative, okay? It doesn't matter which one, You're, you know, it doesn't matter which way you have the LED, and it really doesn't matter I have a resistor on there because this might actually be a smaller LED than, uh, than needed, so I have to, uh, I have to kind of dumb down the power uh, lower the power or the voltage to the LED, which is what this is. It's just a resistor. All right, let me zoom in here. So it's just taped together, but ooh, let me just tighten that up. There we go. So that's just a resistor, okay, and that's the LED. So what we're doing. So we're using the track power to light it and that's all I'm doing okay just like we talked about how the track interrupts with this switch here okay if that switch is off this black terminal strip here on the left my inside rail it has no power the red one does right the outside rail always has power okay but the black one does not so you're giving power to you know the blue wire but you're not making a complete circuit with the gray wire if there's no power to this side so when the switch it turns on then you've got a complete circuit the light turns on okay and that's as simple as it it, it, it can be I, I really I'm not sure how to make it more simple than than that um, it, it looks complicated and it is complicated until you kinda understand it much like anything I guess but you know, a lot of people seem really worried about wiring and doing things like that. And, you know, my main bus is not affected. Um, the rest of the layout, you know, I mean, in a regular layout, mine's, a, mine's different, but in a regular layout, you know, the bus just keeps running, right? The rest of the layout just keeps running. Only this little piece of track is controlled by the switch. So it looks, it looks really intimidating until you kind of sit down and understand it and do it um, again much like anything so um, I hope this you know cleared things up uh, like I said I got a bunch of requests on how I did it and that's just all I did I just have more st I have multiple of these right um, I have more terminal blocks being uh, multiplied to multiple switches controlling multiple tracks that's all it is right I was just sick of always having to go and turn off my locomotive sounds um, every time I boot it up or you know um, even with the PM42 which is my circuit breaker if I short it in the yard everything would boot back up well this way it doesn't so um, I wanted to make this video and share how I did it uh, there's obviously better ways I'm sure I, I don't know of them but I'm sure there are much like anything always room for improvement um, and especially how I did my panel you know this board this board isn't that good and it's printed paper glued like could have done a better job there but you know what it's cheap it's easy like I said I didn't have to go out and buy anything so uh, I'm just gonna move you back it's you know I tied up the wires and I don't know what else what else more you can do now um, the only difference here is my programming track switch. Um, if you watch my how to, how to on the programming track, um, I talk about how with the double pull, double throw, um, when you're set to live, it's it's much similarly wired to how I showed you. Um, so basically, it's coming off the bus, hitting the switch, and going to the track. Well, I just simply as I described, took the LED power from the track power. So the programming track, the light doesn't come on because the whole point of the programming track is to provide less voltage and less power to the track so that if there's anything wrong with your decoder or, or you know, if anything shorted, uh, you actually won't cause damage, which is why the LED does not turn on. But when it's on the live, it's just getting its power from the bus like every other track so which is why the LED is on um, anyways guys 15 minute video uh, comments criticisms questions down below if you like this video don't forget to thumbs up it if you're not and you want to be uh, don't forget to subscribe and until next time enjoy your bacon